Good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Tom Murphy Show. Tonight we're going to be talking about a county park, and it is a county park, and it's Rye Playland. And it's a park that's very important to most people in this county who want a little uh, fun and enjoyment for their families now and then. And one of the reasons I wanted to have this show is because there's a lot of uh, good people who have been working very hard to save that park for the whole community of Westchester County. And they deserve more recognition, and they, they, they deserve to have their voice heard in a wider venue. Uh, tonight, we have three of those people. Uh, we have to my left, Mike Vichy, Deirdre Kern, and Steve Vasco. And they've been working very hard to get the word out about Playland, about how important it is to us uh, going forward to you know, ha have a park where people of modest and uh, you know, lower means can go and have a good time. Uh, Deirdre, let me start with you, because I, I frankly know you the best. Uh, what do you feel is the, the, the main problem with the county's proposed plan, the SPI plan? The SPI plan um, is basically, at this stage of the game, to build an enormous, it's to take over management of the park, but the, the core uh, base of their plan is to build an enormous sports facility right smack in the middle of the parking lot, which involves an 82,500 square foot indoor building and outdoor playing fields. Um, and the biggest concern is that it's going to take pretty much just about 50% of the parking lot away from the amusement park. The building itself? The building, at the whole zone, the building and the fields together comprise almost 50% of the parking lot. Okay. And the amusement park needs the entire parking lot. It can't afford to lose that many parking spaces. Okay, and uh, you know, what, what, now if, if, they, if they build that, you know, in theory, the people who are going there are also going to need parking. Yep. They are. So that's, that's going to cut down your parking even further. Yeah. Th they've factored some parking in, um, and they've, we went to a meeting this morning where there were more details. It was with the County Legislator Committee, um, Pete Harcum's committee with the parks, and the whole meeting this morning was about parking and traffic. And they have revised the plan. It's an ever-evolving plan. That's part of the problem. It keeps changing. Mm -hmm. um, and they have factored in a separate parking system just for the field house, and they've devised a very convoluted way of keeping those patrons separated from the people going to the amusement park, the beach, and the pool. Um, and I couldn't begin to tell you. It didn't make any sense to me. Why would they want to keep them separate? I don't think the people going to the field house are going to have to pay for parking, and I think everybody else is. Ah. That's my understanding. Oh, s separate but unequal. Yeah. Once again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a little different to go to the field house than now, the rest Now, of Mike, the you live by the park. I do. Uh, my dad bought the house that I live in now currently uh, in 1964. Okay. On Redfield Street. And how, how are you affected by traffic? Uh, not traffic, parking and traffic, just well, as being a neighbor of the park as currently. Right now, uh, from May 1st to October 1st, we have a no parking zone on our street. Okay. So it's illegal to park near the park uh, from Milton Road on down toward the shoreline. And even on days when the parking lot isn't full, people try to avoid and skirt the issue of paying the $10 to park right. and park wherever they, they feel is fit and then walk down to the beach and or park or, or wherever. So it does affect us uh, on a, on a, a, a summer-wide basis. Now, whoever knows this uh, can, can answer it. Does anyone know, has the county done its own, its own independent analysis of parking and the issues that it provides? Not, not that I've ever seen. And, you know, mm -hmm. we've attended the different meetings. It's always been uh, put on SPI as part of their plan to finance the parking study and do that. Um, but, you know, w one of the things that we've also brought up many times is that a lot of the, the parking studies that they've done and a discussion around parking seems to be based on what happened in the past and you know how the park has been attended on different days and different years and what what really troubles me is that we're supposed to be planning for the future right. we should be looking at a business plan for success at Playland and say if if we're going to be successful how many cars are we going to actually get there not it doesn't matter how many cars we had there 3 years ago it's what is a successful Playland look like in the future okay. and if you base it on those numbers you know where we're talking about maybe 750,000 people a year going into the park. That's a totally different dynamic than what's going on today. And I think any plan for traffic or parking has to look at that kind of success as opposed to not, you know, lack of success or any of the mm -hmm. other things that have been going on at the park. Mm -hmm. So um, I do think an independent study is warranted, but it has to be based on 
what we all agree is what we want to happen, have happen at the park in the future. Right, and, and, and there should be, all the options should be looked at, not just SPI's option. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been involved in a lot of land use in this community in Mamaret, and you know, the person who pays for the balking study and the traffic analysis usually somehow gets exactly what they wanted. You know, <laughs> they, they use, mm -hmm. These planners start mm -hmm. with the answer sure. and work yep. their way back, you know, on most cases. That's why you want an independent analysis. Uh, agreed, and, and because it's so important, because it's not, it's not just about the inconvenience of the community. I mean, that's obviously very important, but the, if there isn't enough parking, if the traffic doesn't flow, then people won't come to the park. Mm -hmm. right. It's inconvenience of the patrons. And, yep. you know, today there's already some issues on certain days of the year. If you add additional roadblocks to them, they may not want to come because the parking lots are full. They can't get down the access road. So it's, it's a much more critical issue than just inconvenience or people parking on the streets around there. Yeah. It's about the financial survival of the park. It is. To, to add, they, they're, they're trying to add amenities to the park. They've added the Children's Museum, which should be open. They want to have the Children's Museum going in the summer. They want to have the Field House Field Zone going in the summer. The amusement park, we would, should want it at full throttle. Mm -hmm. The beach and the pool. <coughs> and they want to somehow add all of this business and do it with a 50% reduced amount of parking, and it just doesn't make any sense. And, you know, the, the, what, what will end up happening is they'll say, well, you see, Playland isn't financially viable. We tried, and right. it didn't work out. Right. But, because I, I do think that the Children's Museum is like a nice complement to Playland. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Because it, it you know, is. It's the same demographic. It's the same age yep. group. It's you a know, crossover. A couple hours in a museum, you go to the, you know. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like a trade off for a kid. You, you have yeah. to learn something, then we'll go on a ride. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's now, right. you went through the educational part. Well, it's yeah. kind of fun, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, it is. It, it does mix well. And, and the thing that confounds me is I don't, see I see everything else a synergy between everything else the beach the pool the amusement park the children's museum and then you have this private for-profit basically as far as I can tell primarily league only use yeah it's not like this field house and this field zone is going to be open Westchester County fields where you can come with your park pass and use it it's all going to be scheduled fee-based they're marketing apparently specifically to leagues I don't think it's even really going to involve we're not clear on who they're marketing to uh, as far as schools and what age demographic, but it's um, it's like a separate entity, and we can't really figure out how it does mix with everything else. It's like one of these things is not like the other. Well, I, I think you, you hit on it before. You know, they, they sent out an RFP for Playland. Mm -hmm. They had four people answer it. Mm -hmm. And if, if I 12. was one of the, the 12, 12 answers, four, yeah. four, yeah. four, 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 four there was probably three proposals three. that in the end actually were viable, three pretty, pretty much viable. Yeah. But if I were one of those people that lost out and then, you know, my competitor got the bid, but then he changed his whole plan. Yeah. Con it's this constantly morphing plan. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't really, you know, talk about it accurately because everything you knew about it yesterday is different today. Exactly. And you know, I, how do you trust that as a business model? That's a good question, and I don't really know, I mean, what, it's changed so many times. It doesn't seem fair to the other people that were in the bidding process that they haven't gotten the same opportunities to, you know, keep changing their plan, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm also confused as, at this point what the legislators should even be voting on. It's like, what is the plan? You keep changing it. What are, what are they supposed to vote on? I, I think that's a really good point because what, what has actually seemed to change also is what was the goal of the original mm -hmm. RFP? Um, you know, I, I remember when it was first talked about, it was to, to get the best plan for Westchester and to put a plan in place that would make Playland financially solvent and, and also reduce the burden of, of the debt service that they're required to pay. Um, and we've had many discussions on how that's not uh, treated the same as other parks right. in Westchester. Or, so or that, golf courses. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Like when you compare right. it to other parks or golf courses, Playland is the only one that they actually say the debt service is losing money. So that discussion is kind of well known. But um, what's also came up today, um, one of the legislators at the hearing actually said the current um, SPI plan doesn't cover most of the debt service either. So uh, that, that really astounded me mm -hmm. because I'm looking at it and saying, I, I thought we were going through this right. process to solve that problem. To solve, to that, solve problem. that problem, that was the number one. and we're saying we're going to put this giant for-profit field house in. We're bringing in a new mu amusement park operator. We're doing all this stuff at the park, and we're landing back right where we started. I mean, yes, they're they, they're going to improve some of the infrastructure, but if we're not doing something to help the financial stability of the park, then what, why are we even looking at that plan? It, yeah. it, you know, and there's going to be a, a session with the legislators 
to uh, look at the finances more closely. <coughs> yep. But I hope that's primary because I want to find out, you know, if the field house isn't contributing to it and if the rest of the plan isn't going to reduce the burden on the taxpayers, then I want to know why we're not looking at the other plans. It, yeah. it, it, it really is, you know, I mean, <clears throat> County Executive Astorino campaigned on that. He talked about it consistently as one of his main talking points, right? Financial stability, remove the burden on the taxpayers. If we're not seeing that, then we're not meeting the goals that he set at the very beginning of the process. And that's, that's a huge problem. Well, you know, you're, you're speaking about the tax burdens. And uh, I don't know if, if you've even known this, but in 2009, Westchester did a study, an impact study, mm -hmm. a, an economic impact study. And the tax levy per residence household is only less than a half of one percent for playland or yeah for, for playland less than a half of a percent of my tax levy from my payments of my boys to, to your county taxes okay is goes toward playland okay so that amounts to less than ten dollars well, at that point year, uh, at that household. point it was six dollars and 46 cents okay so yeah. a year negligible yeah and, yes. and another right. another key point that we've learned recently in the last week or two is that um the way that this whole deal is structured one of their comp original competitors, a company called Central Amusements, who run Luna Park and Coney Island, were brought in to run the amusement park. That was a change that was made last summer. And what we've learned over the last week or two is that all the capital improvements that need to be made and the fixes that need to be made to structures and at, at the amusement park that's crumbling, Central Amusements, is the onus is on them to generate all of the revenue to pay for that. And, and they're willing to do it. They're willing to do it, except that you've got this field zone that's being run for profit and basically we've determined that except for some small fee they're going to pay t to SPI as rent none of their profits are going back to the park so what are they what are, what are we building this for and it's a 12 million dollar structure they're building in a flood zone and after 10 years of use wear and tear their their shtick is they're handing it back to the people of Westchester County as a gift that they're giving to us that we will forever be responsible for the maintenance the upkeep look at all the the damage that all of those structures suffered <coughs> over Sandy the the roof on the ice rink still isn't fixed 17 months later the boardwalk just got opened last week the back boardwalk hasn't even been touched it's not going to be done for another two years H has the county done a secret <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that, for those watching, you know, that, that's a state environmental quality review <laughs> So I it, take it from your response, the county hasn't done a secret. Well, well it, it looks like that they have filed the right it. Way. However, <clears throat> the, one of the things that they haven't done <clears throat> is, is included the community of Rye in it. And um, that seems to be a serious problem. Uh, it, it looks like it is required. In fact, um, uh, Rye has actually hired a, um, an attorney to look into the environmental part of this and has stated that, in their opinion, they need to be um, part of the seeker review. Um, and, and you know, it touches on a lot of other things here that, that I, I guess about the process that, that have always troubled me, and, and that's that it, it seems like the county executive's office has gone out of their way to exclude parties that, that should be involved. You know, we, we were talking about the Children's Museum before. It did take a long time to get through. It's a great idea, but they did, they, they, you know, followed all the right procedures. They made sure that they went through the parkland alienation process, which you're supposed to do if you're repurposing a part of a park. SPI plan doesn't want to do that. They followed seeker procedures. They did all these things. They made sure they got the community on board before they kind of forced it down their throats. And this plan, it just doesn't seem to be following that kind of procedure. It's like, well, we don't think that's required. We're not going to follow. We're not going to involve you in the seeker filing. Um, these kind of things start to make you wonder, you know, why, why would you avoid consistent yeah. long-running mm -hmm. processes unless you're trying to hide something or not get things out in the open? And um, each time a new detail comes out, it seems like they're on the wrong side of the issue. And, and, and that probably bothers me most about anything else.